Those who have kept up with the lore community in Elden Ring know the story of Dialos Hoslo. Vati Vidya created an incredible prepare to cry that took us through his story in the Lands Between, as well as the stories of Alexander and Jarberg. While this video painted a picture of Dialos' arc through Elden Ring, it didn't touch on who Dialos truly was and one of the major influences in his life, his brother, Juno Hoslo. Juno is the older brother of Dialos, and he took on the responsibility of representing House Hoslo, being the face of the family's strength, because he believed Dialos could never hold that burden alongside him. Today we're going to explore the relationship between these two, as well as the oath of House Hoslo and the weight it carried for its bearers. Before diving into today's topic, we wanted to take a minute to ask you to subscribe to Square Table Gaming. We've grown quickly as a channel, and we try to thank this incredible community for boosting us as often as we possibly can. For those who have already subscribed, thank you, sincerely. And for those who haven't, we're just happy you're enjoying our content. If you decide to sub, please hit the bell as well. That way, you make sure you never miss the newest episodes of our Elden Lore series. With that out of the way, let's get back to the story of House Hoslo. House Hoslo's motto, the tale of House Hoslo is told in blood, had a significant impact on the brothers throughout their lives. For Dialos, it was aspirational. He longed for the day he would tell the tale of House Hoslo, but for Juno, it was a duty. Hoslo's helm is a twin-tailed silver helm decorated with flowery adornments, symbol of the head of the revered House of Hoslo. It tells us, Juno Hoslo had a younger brother, who was all talk and no trousers. His inability to commit to action was such that Juno inherited the Hoslo legacy without resistance, granting him the freedom to shower his little brother with adoration. So Juno decided early on that his indecisive little brother should not have to bear the burdens of House Hoslo. He wanted to shield this boy from the brutality that may come from taking action to preserve the reputation of their home. While some may believe Juno thought little of his younger brother, it seems as though he bore his brother no ill will. Rather, his goal was to make sure that Dialos would never have to live a life marred by spilling blood. Juno went on to leave House Hoslo, making his way to the Lands Between, called by Grace. It's clear that he went on to make a name for himself as a fearsome warrior. With two whips by his side, Juno proved his mettle time and again against those wandering the lands but it provided him with no solace, no sense of purpose. He soon began to see that bloodshed begets only bloodshed, and the credo of his house weighed on him. He continued to tell the tale of House Hoslo in blood, and it left him disillusioned to his purpose. Juno, with two Hoslo's petal whips by his side, made his way to the mountaintop of giants, deciding to live in seclusion, away from any who would challenge him so he no longer had to fight to prove his worth. It's unknown if he received this letter before or after deciding to sequester himself, but Hoslo's armor tells us the story of his relation to Volcano Manor. This armor is described as garish silver armor decorated with red embellishments, passed down through the Hoslo family. When Juno Hoslo received an invitation to the Volcano Manor, he discreetly refused. I have already walked many a road drenched in blood, yet never would I consider myself a champion. Juno made it clear that he had no intention of continuing his bloody crusade through the land. He was done fighting. He was no champion. He was simply a noble, trying to fulfill his duty. And it left him with the stark realization that all his fighting and bloodshed ultimately led to nothing. It's likely the Volcano Manor saw this tarnished, who defeated no demigods, but was known as a force to be reckoned with, and thought they could utilize his strength for their own purposes. But his refusal of the call did not sit well with them. This next piece of the story falls squarely into the realm of speculation. Hoslo's armor says it's passed down through the family, and the petal whip is a work of art handed down through the generations of the illustrious House Hoslo. But when we meet Dialos, he already wears his house's armor and carries the whip. With this in mind, we believe the Juno of our world is already dead, 
killed by the volcano manor. Perhaps, behind the scenes, this is what led Diallos and Lanya to the Lands Between, both wanting to avenge Juno after receiving the armor and whip. However, Diallos's indecision led Lanya to chase the recusants on her own, and ultimately got her killed. While we can face Juno ourselves on the mountaintop of giants, we do so through an invasion. As we know, invasions take place across time and space. We enter a new dimension to fight our targets. So this would explain how we're able to assassinate the eldest son of House Hoslow while still keeping this story intact. Regardless of why you believe Diallos came to the Lands Between, all of his equipment explains why he should not have. Diallos' mask tells us it is a replica of a twin-tailed silver helm with flowery adornments, only without the twin tails. Diallos Hoslow had an older brother who was a stern, self-possessed man of few words. His achievements made him seem out of reach, and so the younger aspired to be like the older, yearning for the day he would tell the tale of House Hoslow in blood, knowing full well that it would break his brother's heart. Even though Juno coddled his brother, and avoided pushing him to become a warrior, Diallo still lived with dreams of grandeur, of following in his brother's footsteps. Another piece of equipment Diallo carries, the Distinguished Great Shield, is described as a great shield featuring sumptuous ornamentation used by the scions of great families. Due to their excessive size, these shields were at times seen as the hallmark of little lordlings who were too timid to earn a few nicks and scratches. Again, we see how Diallos was not prepared for this journey. Juno's decision to take on all of the responsibility of the Hoslow name and allow his younger brother to be an untrained braggart turned Diallos into a noble incapable of truly taking action, scared of the consequences of battle, with dreams of being a great warrior. Throughout his quest, Diallos makes convictions and throws them away on a whim. He likely came to the lands between in the first place to avenge his brother, but sits in the round table hold, too cowardly to explore the lands. This leads to Lanya taking it upon herself to do so, and being murdered in the process. Diallos then swears to avenge Lanya, but is taken in by the Volcano Manor, who likely thought Diallos may have been as fierce a warrior as his brother. A little flattery and the promise of renown was enough to get him to change his convictions, and give up on his quest for vengeance. After we put an end to the manor, Diallo says, It's just as my noble brother says, I'm a complete fool. I can't believe I thought I could become a champion. Choosing to wallow in self-pity at the realization that he gave up on avenging his friend, and sullied the name of his house by not answering their transgressions with blood. Finally, he finds himself in Jarburg, where in a way, he heeds his brother's advice, and renounces the credo of House Hoslow. He chooses to protect the denizens of Jarburg as their potentate, his soft hands finally put to use in helping those under his protection. His story will not be told in blood, but in peace. Unfortunately, as we all know, Diallos' story comes to a bittersweet end. He falls defending Jarburg, and while many died, he did manage to save Jarbarn. House Hoslow's story is again told in blood, but this time, it is blood spilled in defense of the innocent, not in a battle for the sake of superiority. In the end, Diallos finally does get to live the kind of life his brother wanted for him, one of nobility through service instead of bloodshed, even if it is short-lived. The Hoslow brothers tell a story of family, of meeting the expectations of those around you, and wanting better for those you care about. While Juno believed he was saving his brother from a life of hardship by allowing him to live a life devoid of battle, Diallos likely could have been better helped by stern tutoring from his brother. On Diallos' side, if he had heeded his brother's warnings from the beginning, Lanya may yet live, and he needn't have died in battle. Of course, Diallos dies a hero, which we believe Juno would have been proud of, and Diallos himself did finally obtain the glory he was always seeking. Thank you for joining us as we discuss the Brothers Hoslow. Do you think we missed anything in this story? What do you think of our theory on Juno's death? Comment letting us know your thoughts. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to see more lore dives like this one. Unfortunately, life has been a little chaotic, and between work, the channel, and my wife and I starting a Stranger Things podcast, the Hawkins Hellfire Collective, this series is likely going to be moving to a once-a-week cadence for the foreseeable future. With that said, we're hoping it will lead to more intricate lore dives with even deeper research. Thank you again for your continued support, and we look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.